Hi, my name is Robin Smith and I'm the host of Integration Television. Welcome to the December and uh, final interview for uh, 2011. As the year is closing, I look back on our, uh, our earlier interviews, our launch in September and our interview on how EDI has evolved with Jason Han of Virtual Logistics, our uh, October interview on uh, supply chain optimization with Andy Davies and our feature interview in November with Mark Keynes of Blue Link ERP talking about uh, integration, data integration from an ERP vendor's perspective. Some really interesting stuff there for, um, for people who are watching. Uh, our December interview is a feature interview with uh, Paul Foggy of uh, GS1 Canada, Vice President of Healthcare, talking about the importance of data cleanliness in the supply chain and the role that GS1 Canada plays uh, the role of GETNs and GLN. So this is this is going to be a very important interview, very interesting uh, content. Uh, we filmed this interview earlier. Paul is a very engaging speaker, so uh, I think you're going to enjoy this interview. Uh, news: We'll uh, we'll be talking uh, uh, about uh, some of the feedback we've had. Um, one of the requests that came into our Twitter feed, and I've received emails. Uh, over the course of the months, um, asking, could we turn uh, Integration TV into a podcast so that people could listen on their uh, their mobile device, their iPhone, their iPad, etc.? Uh, we are in the process of doing that. We are uh, submitting shortly our um, our audio clips to uh, to iTunes, and uh, we should have uh, Integration TV uh, as a podcast available on iTunes. So that's probably coming in January of 2012, so in the new year. So we're really excited about that. It's a whole new other avenue to uh, to get that message out and get Integration TV out. We, um, <clears throat> we have some really interesting feature interviews lined up uh, for the new year. I'm not going to let you know uh, what they are. They're going to be surprises, but there's some really good ones. And um, uh, we're, we're looking forward to them. For the news, uh, we're going to keep this really short, uh, given that this is our December special and uh, uh, Christmas is coming. I uh, want to highlight the, uh, the December Harvard Business Review. Uh, there's two fascinating articles, uh, and I really mean fascinating, uh, on the future of shopping and uh, know what your customer uh, wants before they do. And this is talking um, at the retailer, uh, both small and large, and how um, the importance of data integration in the retail landscape is going to change very significantly as the whole retail shopping experience changes. We're hearing a lot of information and a lot of chatter today about mobile commerce. Uh, we're hearing <coughs> how electronic commerce, that web shopping experience, is being integrated to a, to a mobile experience. And, um, some of the futuristic thoughts and ideas in the Harvard Business Review article uh, talking about the importance of, um, of that customer experience from a mobile perspective. That's got some pretty serious implications from a data integration perspective for um, people, who are, uh, people who are running companies who are supplying the retail trade. The days of the old distribution, uh, I sourced a product from the Orient and uh, I could bring it in and sell it to the retailer. Those days are gone. Uh, the retailers can source far easier today from the Orient. Um, and what companies are having to look at is how they add value in that supply chain. And part of that is going to be the data integration and the data that they bring to the table to allow the retailers to fulfill that more um, mobile-focused and web-focused uh, shopping experience. So it's an interesting read. I really encourage you to look at it. Uh, it's, um, it's, uh, there's some interesting ideas there. So feedback uh, on our Twitter feed at um, VL Integration TV. We've had some really good feedback. Uh, you can send us an email uh, at our website at uh, tv.virtuallogistics.ca and now on to uh, our feature interview with uh, Paul Foggy from uh, GS1 Canada. Thank you. Hi, welcome to Integration TV and our feature interview. I'm your host Robin Smith and today I'm joined with Paul Foggy from uh, GS1 Canada Vice President. Uh, Paul, if 
you can uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your role at GS1. Thank you, Robin. I'm happy to do so. Uh, my name is Paul Figge. I'm the Vice President of Healthcare for GS1 Canada. GS1 Canada is a not-for-profit organization, one of 108 <coughs> organizations uh, across the globe, uh, dedicated to uh, collaborative commerce, to improving the um, ability of organizations across the full trade partnership to, uh, to do work together relative to supply chain, to data, uh, to products, and to processes. Excellent. So Paul, tell me, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the genesis of GS1, uh, how it was formed, what the, what the mandate is, what its role is. Uh, it's clearly a neutral body from what uh, I understand. Uh, but just j just understanding that whole that whole genesis of it. Sure. I'd be happy to do so. The uh, GS1, uh, uh, one of its four pillars, and perhaps its most important pillar, is the notion of cr uh, creating and maintaining community of interest. And so I'll use healthcare as an example. Within the healthcare community in Canada, on our CareNet Healthcare Sector Board, we have representatives from the provider community, from hospitals, health authorities group purchasing organizations and shared services organizations. We have uh, distributors, uh, we have uh, um, associations, and we have uh, um, uh, producers of products, uh, whether they be food services or uh, medical devices. And so uh, we believe firmly that the community has to come together uh, across the full trade partnership to understand what are the challenges and what are the, the possible benefits of applying global can standards and keys uh, to improve uh, transactional activity and improve the ultimate value of whatever we're trying to achieve in, in the end result of the organization, whether that's providing care to the patient uh, in a small community or whether that's producing a, um, uh, a, a heart valve and selling it into Canada. So, the, so, the, so part of that process is the definition of standards. Are you the, the, the governing body of those? How, how are those standards put together? How are the is is there a common common uh, set of standards around yes. the world? Yes, uh, exactly. So GS1 uh, is a um, uh, is a very a comprehensive organization um, uh, with member organizations right across the world who uh, have ownership and control and uh, ensure uh, consistency around a standardized approach to a set of keys and a set of standards, which are the same across the globe and across all product lines. And so probably the most well-known um, uh, standard or key we use, the barcode, is called the GEATON, the Global Trade Item Number. And the GEATON is a number, but it's also the number attached itself to a particular barcode, but it's more importantly, it's a standardized approach to identifying a product. So that product only needs to be identified once at the point of manufacturing, and that same identification, the GEATON number, the attributes attached to that GEATON number and the barcode itself in whatever modality of barcoding is utilized can then be used right throughout the trade partner relationship from when the manufacturer puts it on the device or on the product and in the package right through distribution logistics uh, into um, retail if it's for sale uh, into um, production manufacturing production if it's being manufactured somewhere else or in our case in healthcare going into a warehouse or in directly into a hospital uh, and then being ultimately utilized for uh, patient care. The same number, the same barcode can be used throughout the process. That's, uh, that eliminates a huge roadblock in terms of data management, in terms of the flow of product from manufacturer to ultimate use. Uh, and certainly we've seen in Canada and throughout the world huge benefits to, uh, to organizations in utilizing automation by utilizing barcode. Excellent. Okay. So how does so you know you you talk specifically about a GEATON, I've heard the term GLN as well. Um, how does a GEATON differ from a UPC code or a SKU? Um, because I think there's some confusion out there. Certainly sure. amongst our customer base, we've seen confusion. Well, I have a SKU, I have a UPC code, and now Walmart is asking me for a GEATON. Uh, you know, can you explain to the audience? You know how how the GEATON is actually a better mechanism. Sure. Uh, Absolutely, and, and that's probably the key. The GEATON is, uh, is the acknowledged uh, best standard for identifying a product or a trade item in the world for a number of reasons. The first is because it's, it's agreed to around the world. There's no dispute, is this the right standard, is this not the right standard. Um, many may remember the days when every uh, manufacturer 
would come out with their own barcode. And in order to utilize that yes. barcode, you had to download, download their software. You know, the barcodes exist. 1974, Wrigley's gum was the first barcode. But it did, wasn't helpful to, the, to the, the, the average retailer because you had to download Wrigley's software. Then you had to download someone else's software. And so the barcode uh, creates automation, but you need to have the software and the integration in your systems to automate from, from, from procurement into listing and into a point of sale. The, the GEAT, the Global Trade Item Number, is acknowledged around the world and is utilized around the world as a standard taxonomy and approach to barcoding. So it's very standardized in terms of uh, the rules around, uh, around the barcode itself, around the, the, the modalities of barcoding you might be able to use, rules around uh, how it's applied, where it's applied, creating a standardized approach. That's one reason why the GEATN is, is, the, is the gold standard. The second reason is because a GEATN is much more than a SKU. A SKU, standard stock keeping unit, is a term many of us are familiar with. It relates to a particular product in a way of identifying a product, and it has universal usage, and it continues to have universal usage. But a SKU does not distinguish between uh, packaging lines. And so one of the challenges if you work within, within supply chain, and especially in healthcare, is the SKU for a, a set of gloves, a SKU for a box of gloves, and a SKU for a case of gloves is exactly the same. That's right. If I'm working in a warehousing environment and I order gloves, I'm ordering at the case size because I need lots of gloves because I'm going to distribute them. If I'm a nurse manager on a particular nursing unit, I want to order a set of gloves. The challenges have, are created if that number is the same number. A GEATN is applied at the, at the packaging level as well as the product level. Uh, so the three things, it's, it's globally recognized, it, it, it's much more definitive in terms of packaging level, and lastly, the rules around when a GEATN applies and when a GEATN needs to be changed means that, that users of that information can be much more comfortable about the accuracy of the data relative to the product. Well, and that, that brings up two interesting points because the, the accuracy of the data, and we'll discuss this a little bit later, uh, has downstream effects for a business. The costs, uh, the costs of poor information, they're huge. They're, they're absolutely massive. Um, and we've touched on in, in past interviews about this. The other element is the, um, the fact that, that because you have a globally recognized uh, item number, as opposed to something that the manufacturer just dreams up, and because, as we all know, people like to do things their own way, uh, you're not having the same SKU or the same UPC code applied to two different products, which from an integration point of view is an absolute nightmare. Um, we're talking healthcare, and just before we get in, the, the GLN, the, it's the global locator number? Location number. Okay. How, how, does, that, how does that tie in with the GTN? Uh, sorry, with the GTN? Well, GTN is a, is a global standard with respect to identifying a product. And it, it, it was created to fulfill a number of needs, ultimately being able to, to create a, a one-to-many scenario. The manufacturer assigns the GEATN, the manufacturer is accountable for making sure that the rules are followed. Once that GEATN is assigned, everybody can use that GEATN for whatever purposes. So it creates a one-to-many and it creates integrity and certainty around, around the use of that identifier for the purpose of a product. GLNs are, are a fairly new key in terms of the world and they relate to locations. And so the GLN stands for Global Location Number and it is the same principle of one to many, uh, but in this case it's who's ever accountable for the location. If you, if you look in healthcare or frankly if you look in a lot of other industries, uh, distributors, manufacturers will have address books for the distribution of product and they'll have to upkeep those address books on their own relative to, to where do I ship this product, where do I build this product. Uh, on the flip side, the, the users of the product will have to have address books of where do I, where do I remit my, um, uh, my payment to, where do I send my PO to. And what that creates is, is redundancy, and when you have redundancy, it creates the challenge of errors that the same location may have five or six or seven different addresses. Yeah. GLNs are the concept of a one-to-many. The organization that, that has that address, and that address is more than just a physical address, it's also a functional address, takes, is accountable for maintaining that address. Um, that address is, is entered into a registry, and then anyone who wants to be able to use that address can go find it. And so the busy hospital that has 
16, 1700 different vendors shipping a product every day only needs to be concerned about, about maintaining that address once. Those vendors, those distributors can go into the uh, True Source location, which is the name of the registry, and can go find that address and be comfortable that it is uh, it has got integrity and that it's that it's correct. So they should really be using the GLM rather than a, a dreamt up internal ship to code, which is uh... yes. And and the 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 the, the one um, the one plug that I'll I'll, I'll provide for GLNs and GTNs relative to automation uh, is that that by having a certainty about the about how we describe something and having a certainty with with knowing that that it's accurate and knowing that it's always in the same the same uh, it's the same space and size uh, uh, enables EDI to become much more functional oh, so absolutely. an EDI document which has a GTN on it and an EDI document which has a GLN doc, uh, number on it means that any system that's going to receive those is going to be comfortable knowing that it has the right product and it has the right location. Uh, for uh, for uh, hospitals and health authorities, that's important because it, the more we automate, the more we can take the labor that was dealing with transactional activities and apply it to more value-added activities. Absolutely. For the manufacturers who, who are producing product, when GLNs become um, become um, um, uh, fully comprehensive within healthcare. That those manufacturers are going to have a much better idea of, of the spend visibility. Where are my products being shipped and where are they being used? Because the GL, GTN is the product and the GLN is the location. It would be very easy using systems to be able to correlate that data. Yeah. No, that's, that's a very, you, you, you certainly bring up some really interesting points there. From a data integration perspective, we've certainly seen these, this, this hodgepodge of homemade, made up. Uh, ship to codes and item codes creates integration nightmares and where we've where we've worked with GTNs and GLNs uh, the integration curve is is much shorter it's much faster the the uptime is much much faster the onboarding process is much faster so uh, and the data is cleaner and because that data is cleaner it's it's uh, it's much much more effective um, but if I can talk about a couple of very um, uh, important uh, possibilities uh, when GLNs become the predominant way to identify where products are shipped um, within within, uh, within sure. healthcare and frankly within within the general uh, general population, um, in terms of the concept of recall, recall, uh, food safety, product safety, very important in, in any society. Right now, um, every uh, every industry takes a shotgun approach. A product gets into the marketplace and there's some danger posing to the public and a shotgun is blasted out with messages. Anybody who bought this product, bring it back. Bring it back. Uh, so we trust in our communication, but our communication is, is very much not directed. And, and in healthcare, that's, that's re really no differently. If there's a medical device that's malfunctioning, if there's a drug that needs to be recalled, that message is pushed through the line to everyone who might have used the product and then those people try to find the product and deal with it at the at the utilization. Yeah, level. so you have this real hodgepodge of and, and with no with no certainty of whether or not the message actually got there and whether the product actually did get recalled. Uh, fast forward to when everyone's using GLNs, then that product will be attached when it's shipped to a GLN, and with certainty, a message will go out saying, "You received this product on this day. How are you dealing with the recall?" Yep. So moving from a shotgun to a very focused approach. To understanding where did that product go, and that's whether it's in healthcare or in the general retail, and then what happened afterwards, because that transaction is now is now identified. The, the, another area that's very interesting with respect to GLNs relates to um, to food food and food safety and um, and sustainability. Uh, GLN is a location number. Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, retailers want to understand where their product is coming from. Uh, both from a geography point of view, but also from a safety point of view. If every farm and every farm and every producer in Canada has a GLN, which is likely to occur, then that GLN will identify with that particular uh, establishment. And will do two things: it will identify the establishment and the production of the products it does, but as well for uh, for those organizations and those individuals who are interested in in locally produced product, you'll be able to quickly identify. Is that GLN within 100 kilometers of where I live? Did that product come locally to 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 be where it is? Whether it's in a grocery store, in a restaurant table, or even on the, on the tray of the inpatient food 
uh, in hospital. Very interesting. We, uh, we in Canada are up for the renewal of the Provincial and Federal Health Care Accord fairly soon. I think it's coming up next year. Um, we've got an aging population uh, on both sides of the borders, um, both in the U.S. and in Canada. There's a lot of talk in the press, in, in business media, about the, the optimization of the health care supply chain um, and taking costs out of that system because of that, that, that growth curve uh, in terms of the baby boomers that are starting to retire, they're going to start to tax that health care system. What you've, what you've talked about leads me to think that there's some real efficiencies here that can be applied in the health care system in Canada. Can you, can you give our audience just a, a lay of the land as to where things are right now and then going forward, what is the, the, the potential implication of the, the, of the adoption of a more optimized supply chain um, on the health care system? Well, for, for certain, there's opportunities within supply chain in, in healthcare. The um, and, uh, if we can learn from the lessons that that other industries have taught us about about standardization, about maximizing value, about automating transactions, uh, there is a significant amount of, of uh, ability for for healthcare organizations that are using public money to be able to do a better job of of procuring and of uh, utilizing uh, product and and that's happening right across Canada we're seeing profound changes in how how um, health uh, health care is organized how things are purchased um, how uh, organizations are dealing with their their, their their supply the supply chain community uh, so there's there's absolutely um, um, uh, incentives and possibilities for changing how uh, how procurement and how supply chain is managed and those are those are important but probably more important is uh, unlike any other industry healthcare is a um, is a um, an industry where the cost of providing the service continues to go up and up uh, um, any other industry that you can think of as automation occurs as um, uh, as uh, uh, industries get more productive as the marketplace uh, enters, you see the cost of actually providing the service going down. But healthcare goes up because every day hundreds of researchers around the world are working on new and, and innovations to make life better and to extend life. And those innovations become medical products that are expensive. And so every day we can look forward to more expensive products being introduced into healthcare. So we have a challenge of making it, making it more efficient today. We have a bigger challenge in the future as the possibilities of nanotechnology and personalized medicine Absolutely. and genomic medicine uh, happen. So, this, this, so, so there's some real challenges to, to balance the, the rising costs, taking costs out of the system. I mean, you hear the politicians talk about salaries are too high. You've got to pay, in my mind, you have to pay market rate for expertise. But I think that if we, if we look at streamlining that supply chain, we can start to bring some of those costs down and create more of that balance. Where do you see that going forward in terms of the initiatives that are underway that GS1 has got, uh, the impact of that? Are we seeing reductions in the cost of poor data? Are we seeing uh, the hospitals and the manufacturers onboarding? Uh, is it having an impact? Uh, it, it is and it will even more um, as, as the utilization of GEDENS and GLNs becomes more predominant within the industry. Uh, GS1 um, is neutral, not for profit. Our goal is to create common vocabulary and create a more efficient way of doing business. That lets the manufacturers get new product to the market more quickly to expand their, the, the, the amount of uh, exposure their product has within the marketplace and it allows the healthcare providers to be able to procure uh, and manage their products uh, more efficiently. Those efficiencies hopefully will let uh, let manufacturers, distributors, um, and providers uh, add more value, in, not just in terms of the price of the product, but the use of the product. And that's where the cost is, is in, is in the use of the product. And so interesting. just one's committed to helping the industry become more efficient so it can add more value back into its important mandate. 
Excellent. Well, thank, thank you very much. This has been uh, this has been a very interesting discussion. Um, I see that collaborative supply chain concept becoming more and more important. And uh, so, Paul, thank you. Thank uh, you. Very interesting. And uh, viewers, if you have any questions uh, for Paul or for Integration TV, uh, we have a Facebook page, as you all know. We have our Twitter feed at VL Integration TV. Send us your Twitter uh, comments. And uh, we'll see you uh, in January for our next show. Thank you. Hi, that was a great interview with uh, Paul Foggy, Vice President of Healthcare at GS1 Canada, uh, talking about uh, GEATONS, GLN, and the importance of clean data in the supply chain. Um, that was, uh, was really interesting. Um, it's, a, it's a subject that's dear to our heart. Clean data uh, means that you're not bleeding, uh, you're not bleeding money downstream trying to deal with bad data. So this is, uh, this is the end of our December show. Um, I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and um, we'll be back in January with a feature interview with uh, two really interesting people. Um, Michael Stevens of uh, Integrated Fulfillment of, Van of uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, Eric Brown from Fulfilltopia.com uh, in Virginia Beach, Virginia, uh, in the States, talking about uh, e-commerce fulfillment and uh, shopping cart fulfillment. So e-commerce, the integration of your shopping cart to your uh, fulfillment house in 3PL. So that's our feature interview uh, coming up in January. And uh, for this season, I wish you uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and we'll see you back in January, and hopefully uh, on the slope skiing.